Hi, welcome back to my channel. Um, I've been asked by um, some people who um, subscribe to my channel uh, if I can explain what neurodiversity is. So what is neurodiversity and do therapeutic interventions help? As long as you're not neurotypical, then you are neurodiverse. Even though a lot of people assume that only those with autism are neurodivergent, that's wrong. Since Down syndrome, for instance, affects the way the brain works, those with Down syndrome are, in fact, neurodiverse. The neurodiversity paradigm is a viewpoint that brain differences are normal rather than deficits. Neurodivergent people experience, interact with, and interpret the world in unique ways. This concept can help reduce the stigma around learning and thinking differences. I would say that all students in a special school are neurodivergent. Neurodiversity cannot be a diagnosis. It's not a label like autism, um, ADHD, or Down syndrome. It is in fact a social concept. The term was first coined by the sociologist Judy Singer in the, in the 90s to explain that there, are, there can be variations in brain function and the way that information is processed. As an educationist, I prefer to use the term learning differences within the field of education, as to me, being neurodivergent means that we learn differently to a neurotypical student. And so school needs to find out or schools need to find out how those students learn best and teach them in the way that suits their learning needs. Each of the conditions children are labelled with just makes them different, which is essentially what being neurodivergent is, different to the majority. We need to remember here that sometimes that difference is what makes them successful in their chosen field. Indeed, there is the very important neurodiversity movement, which is a social and political movement, which campaigns to end the marginalization and oppression of neurodivergent people by shifting attention away from the negative aspects of neurodivergences and towards their positive aspects. As far as learning differences go, I've said many times that I believe that when a child enters school, one of the most important assessments is the sensory profile that every child should have. For instance, why would you allow a student who cannot tolerate certain noises to suffer in a busy, noisy classroom, day after day, week after week, year after year, when you could easily give them noise cancelling headphones to use when they need to use them. So how would you know they need them unless an assessment is done? as soon as they enter school, preferably before they even come to school, if I'm totally honest. What is needed is a more inclusive approach to instructive learning. And therapies, I believe, should be available in all schools that have neurodiverse students. And in fact, neurodiverse and neurotypical students can both benefit from therapeutic interventions, if we're honest. Therapies, in my estimation, should be in every curriculum. So should you, oh, I'm just going to go back on that, particularly when you think of the mental health of concerns for everyone. 
So how would you label someone as neurodivergent? So should you, sorry, should you label someone as neurodivergent? In my estimation, no. As I've said at the beginning of this talk, it is a social concept. It is an umbrella term for many conditions that have been termed neurodivergent. These have labels of their own, such as autism, Down syndrome, ADHD, dyslexia, dyspraxia, dyscalculia, developmental language disorder, epilepsy, Tourette syndrome, OCD, schizophrenia, EBD, SLD, PMLD, Fragile X syndrome, etc., etc. If you class a, per a person as neurodivergent, you may be being a bit vague. As a person with autism may only have autism, or indeed they may have other conditions such as epilepsy and or Down syndrome. They're still neurodivergent, but you've actually discovered what particular condition they've got and therefore how you can help them with that learning difference. So how does the term neurodivergent help us? Well, I suppose in that it tells that as a person, that a person is atypical rather than typical. But then to support that person and give them an environment that is conducive to learning, we need to know more about their learning difference or learning differences. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this talk, then please subscribe.